Hello friends and welcome back. This video is going to be talking about my recent purchase. It is something I've had my eye on for a while and it became available on the market. So I moved in to grab it. And it's stored here in the engine house. I'll take a walk around and go see it. There it is. A 1957 Fairmont M19 model F3, originally Boston and Maine, number 664. This motor car was completely uh, disassembled and not usable. I'll insert some of the restoration photos now here. Camera noise. As you can see, the restoration took a little bit. Uh, the engine is completely rebuilt, along with all the, almost all the metalwork on the car is rebuilt. So we'll take a walk around. The crank has a little uh, storage area underneath the tunnel cover, but um, I keep it off when it's inside the engine house. You had to start it. In here is my buzz coils. They're actually Jeep coils, along with some spare tools. Headlights. Uh, this engine is actually water-cooled. It's a Fairmont ROC. The graphics the same here on this side. From the operator's position. It's very, very simple. Very simple car. Here you have your mixture control and your choke. This is your spark advance. This is your throttle, brake, your belt tension, the ignition switch, lights. Like I said, this was built in 1957. When it came to the P&W shops, it was completely uh, there was nothing to this. There was like a frame and a couple wheels. Uh, the engine. Um, this isn't actually the original engine that came with it. Uh, this was a, a rebuilt engine off a display stand. I do know where the original engine is though. So what I'm going to do is stop the camera and pop off the hood and we can have a look inside. So you can see the rest of the car. All right, starting here at the back of the car, we can have a look. Our battery, the knife switch for the battery, our fuel tank, fuel bowl, rear axle pulley, with belt, the air cleaner, 
flywheels to the ROC engine. This here is your idler pulley that pushes on belt tension. Back of the aluminum water hopper. C5 carburetor. Your timing advance. An alternator. It runs off in an internal belt there. So that's pretty much it. These cars were to me a pinnacle of efficiency and mechanical design that was very simple. It was very actually very very few moving parts other than the crankshaft and piston and the two-stroke engine there is no moving parts on this car. So what I'm going to do is put the cover back on and I'm going to set the camera over there on that chair so I can take a video of starting it. So the way you're going to start this car is with the ignition off, we're going to open up our mixture control. I go to three quarters. Um, manual say one thing. A lot of operators say different things. This car, from my experience, seems to be happy at three quarters open. Um, you know, choke it by lifting it up, crank it over five times. The clothespin is actually here to hold it up in the choke position. Once it's done, push that in. Then we will set our car to start car forward for your timing. Turn on the ignition, give it a crack of throttle and some cranks. So let me put the camera down and we'll get to it. Verify that the brake is on. We open up the mixture control
pretty loud, which is fun. And as you can see, pretty smoky in there with that two stroke engine. Headlights are kind of cool in the smoke. So I'm gonna shut off the gas and the battery and I'll be right back. All right, now that the smoke has cleared out a little bit, I can see my other car back there. Just kind of give it another look. So right after this clip here, I'm gonna include videos of this running so a little bit of history behind this is in 2006 it was rebuilt the owners of it prior amassed probably about 400 miles on it which is not a lot for motor cars and recently the opportunity came up to purchase it and i jumped on that the advice i give to a lot of people who ask me about purchasing motor cars or speeders or whatever you want to call them or rail cars is have yourself a hedge of money ready to go because a car like this that's in perfect condition you know when they come up on the market they disappear quickly uh, and you got to move quick I found in the rail car hobby and since 1999 when I've been in it that there are some cars that come on the market and never move and there are cars that come on the market and are on there for less than a day and they're being sold so my advice is to those who are interested in it is to go on narcoa which is n-a-r-c-o-a which is the national rail car organization and follow the links there they have a lot of good information on getting started in this hobby but like i said have that hedge of money ready to go when something nice comes up you can buy it so this car amassed about 400 miles with the previous owner it became available and of course the day I went to go get it it snowed in October here in Massachusetts we got about six inches of snow so I was pushing this home in the snow um, so yeah I've had it out twice so far on the rail. Uh, the first time was a little bit of a learning curve. It went out with another two-stroke guy, uh, Peter, who we've seen in previous episodes, uh, with his car, which is a sister to this Boston and Maine number 669. This is 664 here. Um, he is an expert on the two-stroke engines and gave me a lot of good advice. and. Uh, getting this going and it, it ran fine I just had one uh, plug foul and I took out it again on another day where the snow had melted and we had temperatures in the 70s up in New Hampshire so weather's weird right um, so yeah I'll toss those clips in after this if you like this channel uh, please like and subscribe also share these videos with your friends I'm as always I'm trying to grow this channel here and you know I do get revenue from it, and that revenue that I do get goes back into the channel, which actually helped purchase this car. So, before we go, actually, let me dump the water on it. That holds about a gallon and a half of water. And I know some people are going to ask what was in the other toolbox. And all there is is some emergency rain ponchos and the pins to the tow bar on the back which luckily have not been needed oh and one difference from the stock car is these handles are normally aluminum like on my mt19 back there but when they rebuilt this car they made these out of oak and that has to do with the sound of the handles jostling as you bounce down the track they don't rattle as much and when they do hit the side of the car they, they don't make a echoing sound so I'll toss in those video clips and thanks for watching guys.